before I start this video, let's I'll make a few points clear. I'm not a great fan of Sadiq Khan as a politician. I have some concerns about Euler's and LTN and other issues. However, he does deserve the courtesy of having his words quoted accurately and not distorted or twisted by strange agendas assigned to him that seem to suggest he's doing some naughty business just because he's a Muslim. That's dodgy. With that said, let's have a look at our esteemed historian's latest strange and odd claims. And for this, I'm actually going to use his own channel and go work through it. Because this is so absurdly ridiculous and such a lesson in propaganda at its finest. That it's worth doing this. We're going to get um, a silly ad first, I imagine. <laughs> nice chair, but I'm not interested in buying a chair. Thanks. These two are... Let's skip back to the beginning. Hello again. It is perhaps a reflection of the way in which a small but well-organised group can influence our democratic process that, despite the fact that 82% of the electorate in London did not vote for him, Sadiq... If 82% did not vote, it tells us nothing more than that 82% of people didn't vote. Also, using that's an argument essentially from something not happening. There's no evidence there to present. It's like me, me trying to claim that 82% people, of people didn't go to the park on Friday because they were frightened of ravenous wolves in there. You have to present evidence. Are the British population apathetic politically? Yes. But you're, the 82% figure is just being thrown in there to get a bit of clickbaiting going on. Let's keep going, though. Khan is still firmly in the saddle. This is not a prospect greeted with uh, enthusiasm, of course, in all quarters. It is a feature of our democratic uh, process in this country that only a Put the uh, script somewhere less obvious. A few people bother to vote in local elections which means that if you can marshal a couple of hundred people to vote for your cause, you're likely to get in. This well, yes, that's why it's called democracy. That's the whole point, Web. If you can organise a campaign and raise sufficient support for a cause, you get in. Amazing. Uh, I don't think that's democracy 101. If you don't particularly like what someone is standing for, you can form another party and stand against them. Explains why we have more than a dozen local councillors now in England who are dedicated only to the cause of Islam and a determination to fight against Zionism. Sadiq Khan is a little more subtle than this, of course, but the signs of his true nature are legible if you look... His true nature. Weasel words there. The kind of weasel words you will find people going on about little hats and people rubbing hands. They're very fond of these kind of coded expressions. Or the kind of people or internet forums type one of them and put triple parentheses around names. It's the kind it's that kind of language. He's true nature. Let's keep going a bit further. Look closely. For example, in March 2017, a little over seven years ago. Khan said that terrorist attacks were part and parcel of living in a big city. Let's see what he actually said, shall we, Mr. Webb? All I've got to go on is the, the facts, which is having spoken to the uh, mayor of New York, uh, our people, his office, our people having spoken to the police here, uh, the advice we've received is 29 people have been injured. Uh, there were my thoughts and prayers. Uh, the advice we've received from the police service here and from the mayor's office is to carry on business as usual. I'm not going to speculate as to uh, who was responsible. I'm not going to speculate as to how the, uh, the, the police in New York should react. What I do know is part and parcel of uh, living in a uh, great global city is you've got to be prepared for these things. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to support the police doing an incredibly hard job. You've got to support the security services. And I think speculating 
when you don't know the facts. Notice that Mr. Webb got it wrong by year as well. It's 2016. And notice what Sadiq Khan said was that the security service and police have to be prepared for the possibility of these events. Notice that context went completely off for a walk and wasn't quoted. But who am I to talk? I'm not a historian. Mr. Webb is. This is, of course, not really true. Budapest is a big city and terrorist bombings and death. And yes, it is with a long and complex history, which also includes periods of violence, national uprisings, being involved in numerous wars and that. This is fallacious comparison stuff. You're just throwing cities in for the sake of it, as you'll hear in a minute. Pedestrians being mown down by crazed fanatics. It's not really part of part and parcel of life there at all. Nor is it in Prague, Oslo, Warsaw, Canberra, Hanoi, and many other big cities. It is, however, part and parcel of life in Kabul, Islamabad, Baghdad, Beirut, and London. To give a few instances, hmm, what is the... Basically, chuck those into scapegoat. And those cities all have different, uh, uh, shall we say, personalities anyway. I've travelled around a couple of them, not all of them, but a couple. Well, I was just chucking it in, as usual, with you, this topic comes up to suggest that Muslims are all cookie-cutter shaped and all secretly, you know, terrorist boys. It's not too far underneath the surface either, to be quite frank. Quite ridiculous. The common factor here, I wonder. One thing that's... A the common factor is they serve you usefully in your, ex in your woeful attempt to sort of smear hundreds of millions of people in a style not too dissimilar from the Stummer. And I, no, I'm not going to mince my words or take that back because it's exactly the same kind of tactics that were used. What cities have in common is, of course, there's a lot of Muslims live there. I wonder if anybody has noticed how the street architecture of London has been engineered to cope with the threat of Muslim terrorism. Yes, I've noticed how the street architecture of London has changed to cope with terrorism web. It also changed in Belfast and parts of Northern Ireland to cope with it. But unless you're going to seriously maintain that there are armed cadres of Hamas fighters wandering around the, the leafy lanes of uh, Derry or, the, <laughs> or up and down the bog side, and that the peace wall was erected to stop hordes of Muslim terrorists, this is going to sound stupid. There are all sorts of terrorism originating from all sorts of backgrounds and for all sorts of reasons. You could also find loyalist terrorists who are acting purportedly in the name of the Crown. And you yourself, Mr. Webb, have identified yourself as a fervent supporter of the Ergen, who were classed as a terrorist organisation in the late 1940s by the British. So you might, and if anyone doubts he said that, and if he go to one of his videos about Sam Melia, or he at around the, oh, I think it's the eight minute mark, he comes out with that. I wonder will that video suddenly go for a, a miss into um, a wall? I should point out if it does, it's been downloaded. I am talking now such things as the massive barriers which prevent cars driving onto the pavement on the bridges of central London. They are ugly and intrusive. And also an acknowledgement that fanatical Islamists are likely to attempt to massacre civilians in the middle of London. I mention Muslims here because, of course, we all know perfectly well that the attacks on bridges which those barriers are designed to thwart, those on London Bridge and so on, were carried out by Islamists rather than those mythical far-right terrorists about whom we read in the newspapers. Has anybody noticed the stainless steel bollards, which are now a prominent feature around public buildings? These too are to deter Muslim suicide bombers who might otherwise be tempted. No, they're to deter terrorists of all types. 
I don't think they just pop up with a, or are just installed with a special Muslim spidey sensor in there. If you were to argue that a great deal of terrorism over the last 20 or 30 years in London has been Muslim-oriented, I'd have some room for that. But you're arguing it's exclusively Muslim, and that's where it's getting quite stupid. And you're also making your own argument confined to this century, so you don't have to deal with issues like the IRA or loyalist terrorism or other groups from 40 or 50 years ago because they'll undermine your argument. Having said that, there are also groups that have engaged in terrorism um, within the last 25 years who are not Muslim, and we'll be getting back to that shortly. To ram a car loaded with explosives into some government office or other. I dare say that viewers will be able to cite their own favourite examples of this modern trend in London. It's spread now to uh, other cities, provincial cities like York, and now uh, hastily erecting these bollards to prevent cars driving over the pavement and killing a lot of pedestrians. They've been installed in York, for instance. Obviously, I'm not saying that all Muslims are terrorists. That would be absurd. Of course, yes, it would be absurd, wouldn't it, Simon? So why are you going on about Sadiq Khan's true nature? How is that relevant in any way to his election victory when you're going on about his true nature? If you're not saying all Muslims are terrorists, you're at least suggesting they are fellow travellers. It's very hard to escape this, uh, the implications of it, no matter how many qualifiers you throw around this topic. But it is certainly the case that all the terrorist bombers this century have been Muslim in this country. Have they? Let's have a look at that claim. Let's have a look at a list of terrorist incidents in London. And we'll look at attacks that will use 21st century. Now, Simon, as I said, wanted to say the vast majority of terrorist attacks have been linked to them. Yes, I'd, I'd actually grant his point. But there's been so, uh, quite a few others. If you th look through this list. Van driven into a mosque. Car bombs. Let's have a look at these car bombs up here. 2007 London car bombs. Yes, there it was, Lim. So he has a point on that one. But let's have a look on some others. But then if we look back a little bit before it, at the very end, you have the, the horrid London nail bombings. You have lots of other incidents, as you can see, if you go back before the last 25 years with loads and loads of incidents. Simon is deliberately confining his timeline so we don't have to deal with those. He's also not noticing that these some of these people have different agendas. They belong to groups that fight among themselves. They're not all friendly with each other. Let's broaden it out to a list of terrorist incidents in Great Britain and go from 2000s. 20th September, the Royal IRA fired an RPG-22 rocket launcher at the MI6 headquarters in London. Um, yeah. 2001, 4th of March, the Royal IRA detonated a car bomb outside the BBC television centre in London. 
2001, 3rd of August, the real IRA detonated a car bomb in Ealing. It's about the height of the real IRA activity, really. Then you get a string of... You get the horrible July 7th Central London bombings, which were quite horrible. Then you get Miles Cooper and his letter bomb campaign. Then you get 2017, the... These two, these idiots driving propane canisters into the glass doors of the Glasgow airport terminal. Then you get 2010, MP Stephen Timms was stabbed during his constituency surgery, Brosha Nari Chowdhury. Then you get 2013, um, from April to July, Pavlo Lapshin fatefully stabbed a Birmingham resident and later detonated a homemade bomb outside a mosque. Then you get the horrible killing of Lee Rigby. Then you get the new Irish Republican Army doing parcel bombs. Then you get Thomas Mayer, who shot, shot and stabbed the MP, Joe Cox. Then you get the Westminster attack. Then you get the Manchester Arena bombing. It's a rather more complicated picture as you keep going than, than Simon's. The thing is, Simon wants to present a picture when it's only Muslims doing this, really, or to confine the narrative somewhat. But let's keep going. No one's pretending it, it, Muslim terrorism doesn't exist or isn't real, but Simon's way to deal with it would be seem to be to turn all Muslims into scapegoats and expose their true nature. It is only in cities which have a large Muslim population that terrorist attacks are, as Sadi Ikar puts it, part and parcel of life. Really? Belfast had, had, had uh, during the 1970s and 80s, had a, had a large Muslim population. I must have, I was unaware of this. Jeez, the lads down the mosque there, there in Belfast uh, will, will need to be knowing about that. Uh, uh, Etta, uh, there you go. Uh, the lads over there in the who were in the basket organisations must have all been Muslim. The Red Brigades back in the day, all Muslim. In this, uh, the Simon version of reality again. The truth is that Muslims have a far greater influence on our way of life than their percentage in the general population might suggest is reasonable that is claimed about several groups isn't it simon it's claimed about the ethnic groups you and i both belong to it's one you'll hear about with jewish people all the time with people going like that and going little hatch behind the scenes i don't think you'd be very fond of me claiming that and i think it would be a very simplistic and reductionist way of looking at society you'd also i've also had it heard it claimed about the Irish, that they are hidden leavers and have too much influence. But keep going, Simon. We are actually designing our cities to cope with Muslim activists and now they're beginning to acquire power in local authorities. Often, local councils are very finely balanced between different groups. The Conservative... Well... Truism number 101. Next next week, Simon will tell you water is wet. Of course, politics is a balancing game with everyone engaging in horse trading. It's the nature of the beast. Liberals and Labour members usually hammer out a modus vivendi because, of course, it... Modus vivendi. Oh, Simon attempts to express, impress his, his listeners by using a, a small spot of Latin. How lovely all share similar values and know how to arrange things in a civil life. Here's, here's another bit of um, a, a Latin then, reductio ab absurdium, which is uh, where most of Simon's arguments tend to go. Fashion. I wonder what we're going to, what will happen if we get more Islamists sitting on the council, men who are prone to shouting Allahu Akbar and raving on about the Middle East. Does anybody think that this will benefit local issues? Are you suggesting perhaps that that's Sadiq Khan's true nature? Since you've gone on about his true nature and then spent another oh, good three minutes moving to this point. 
it's a bit hard to know what you mean by his true nature unless this is what you are suggesting. Is that hidden nature? Perhaps not. The remedy for this particular peril is for British people to vote, of course. That the turnout in the election <clears throat> for Mayor of London... Get that cough sword, for goodness sake, it's disgusting. It was just 40%, he's shocking. No wonder a man like Khan was able to get him with just 18% of the vote. Yes, that's right. Fewer than a fifth of the electorate voted for Sadiq Khan. And yet, here he is again. Prove that statistically, Simon. If 40% of people voted, you can make that argument. But what you are, we can only deal with the pattern of people who actually voted. We can't deal with the people who didn't vote because unless you're uh, the Louch and Charles Xavier and can read minds, you have no idea of their inclinations and how they would vote one way or another, and neither do I. They might have all voted for Count Binface, for all I know, the man who amusingly knocked um, the Nationalist parties out and who actually got more votes than them, which was quite funny. Yeah. We need some action at the next election to get people out to vote. This is particularly important because of the Muslim vote organisation, to which I shall, I think, have to devote a separate... Well, then go and do some organisation. Stop sitting there and wa waffling. Also, I don't see what's going to contribute to Britain. That, um, in any useful way to have a man who's going on about hidden natures and their true natures, in a style that seems to ape Oswald Mosley and that seems to, to sort of suggest hidden narratives. Perhaps you could call it, I don't know, you could re resurrect the Diastoma and do your own version for up there in Latin. Whack out a, a newsletter every week. The Summa, uh, coming soon from Simon's Substack. Why are we exposing the true nature of certain groups? You could do little caricatures as, as they used to do back there and put people sort of with, uh, instead of long nose, you could do people sort of um, with funny sort of brown skin and do all sorts of lovely little cartoon graphics. You have a ready-made audience here. Before I close this down, let's look at some of your comments where you're all slow dancing with each other. Let's have a one minute look at them. Let's look at your newest comments. Oh, look, you've got 1,902 comments on this. Lovely. Oh, someone doesn't like it, you twat. I don't know if they mean you or Sadiq Khan. Evidence, please, not bollocks, evidence. Exactly, thank you for that person. Let's have a look at five or ten of these lovely little comments. I bet Muslims voted for this rat. Some probably did, some probably didn't, Melvin. It's an election, people. Are... If that vile man said that, he's an antagonist moron. You'll notice I played what he actually said, unlike a certain great historian here. No, dickhead, terrorism has no place anywhere. Well, if you'd actually listen to what Sadiq has said, as opposed to what Webb said he is saying, you'd have realised that Khan said something entirely different. Let's do three more. So why didn't the lazy people get up and vote? Because they are disenfranchised, Sadiq, and have little interest in politics, to be quite frank. And two more. A coup d'etat. <sighs> By someone who doesn't understand A, how Magna Carta works and doesn't understand how to spell coup d'etat. It's not really worth bothering with that sort of stuff. It's like... <sighs> 
it hurts your brain to read it, to be quite frank. And here's Simon Milligan, one of the rare, increasingly rare voices of something approaching sense on this channel. And two out of three Britons didn't vote for Brexit, just as two out of three never voted for Margaret Thatcher. So what exactly? In isolation, indeed, so what? The candidate with the most vote wins. That's democracy, Mr. Webb. Short of making of a bit voting compulsory, an idea I have some sympathy with. I can see plus and minuses to that. I could I would like to see some way of like expressing something on the on the slip to say that you know no party represents me or something like that. That that would be nice to see on there. And that could be counted as a kind of a, a protest option. What's the alternative? I'm comparing to London debate rooted cut bowl is ridiculous. And of course, Mr. Webb knows it's ridiculous, Simon. He's just doing it to, to push buttons. And here's Des Hewitt. Agreed, but Khan is a danger to your much vaunted democracy. Let's leave it there. And a masterclass there from Webb in how to sell shit on a shovel.